Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain a neo-noir martial arts film called Ninja Assassin. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. The movie begins in a tattoo shop owned by an old experienced man. He is working on a young gangster when a minion brings an envelope filled with black sand. The gangsters do not know what it means, but the old man freezes in shock. He reveals that the black sand denotes the arrival of the brutal, deadliest ninjas in the world. He encountered them long ago and has firsthand experience to know how dangerous they are. When the gangsters call him a coward, he shows them a nasty scar on his chest that was caused by a ninja attack. He was born with a heart on the right side of his chest, which is the only reason he is still alive to this day. Suddenly, a man's head is sliced in half, splattering blood everywhere. Then, a wire drops from the ceiling and pulls a man upwards. When he is thrown back, only pieces of his gut reach the ground. The ninjas stay hidden in the shadows and slice people's bodies and limbs in one go, creating a bloodbath. Only after everyone is dead do we see the ninjas coming out of the dark corners of the room. Then, we are introduced to the Ozunu clan of Japan. It is a clan of ninjas led by the ruthless Lord Ozunu. The clan collects children from around the world and makes them go through a series of brutal training techniques to become the ultimate ninja assassins. They are popular among the world leaders, but hidden from the rest of the world. Anyone who provides the clan with a hundred pounds of gold can hire their assassins and ensure the death of the person they want to target. The Ozunu clan has been working from the shadows for more than a hundred years and is behind the deaths of the Russian president, the Japanese prime minister, Jeffrey Epstein, and many other higher figures. Anyone who knows about them is scared to ever come across them. In one of the sessions, Lord Ozunu introduces a new kid named Raizo to the rest of the group. He was abandoned by his parents and taken into the clan by the leader. Something tells Ozunu that Raizo will be the leader of the clan after him. Because of the expectation, the training is tougher for Raizo. By the time he is 10, he has scars all over his body from the punishment he gets for making mistakes. One of the important qualities a ninja should have is his ability to stay hidden. Raizo is made to walk down a squeaky wooden floor, but a single sound it makes results in his feet being cut by a kyoketsu shoge. At night, the kid can hardly sleep because of the pain. Then, he witnesses kindness for the first time in his life when a girl puts ointment on his wounds. Her name is Kiriko, and she is a fellow ninja in training. The kids are taught to not have any kind of emotions, but Kiriko is different. She doesn't believe in the violence and killings that the clan supports. Time passes quickly, and both Raizo and Kiriko grow up together, hardly talking but always looking out for each other. Raizo has now become the most talented ninja Ozunu has ever trained. However, in a match with his senior, Takeshi, he loses because of a foul tactic of the opponent. The master allows it and instead blames Raizo for being weak. He uses an extremely painful finger-pushing technique on Raizo that causes the guy to crumple in pain. His ultimate test is to survive the night without medical assistance. Upon returning the next morning, Ozunu sees him ready for the new day's training and is proud of the student for passing the test. Soon, Raizo becomes the most talented ninja of the clan, beating the opponent blindfolded and with his hands bound. Kiriko is proud of him, but on the other hand, becomes disenchanted with Ozunu's way of life. She frequently disregards the little rules of the clan and is warned by Raizo. He is scared that if the leader finds out, he will take her heart away. But Kiriko says her heart is with Raizo, so it can never be stolen. In a training session, she is asked to hurt an opponent with a knife. When Kiriko is unable to do it, Ozunu cuts her face and throws her into a cage. Raizo sneaks out to meet with her and feed her water. A few days later, on a rainy night, Kiriko climbs a wall to escape and encourages Raizo to join her. But he chooses to stay, wanting to remain loyal to the clan since it is all he has ever known. Eventually, Kiriko is captured and is set to be executed. Senior Takeshi impales her through the heart in front of everyone. A part of Raizo dies that day, but he still decides to stay loyal to the clan. The scene cuts to a few years later in Berlin Europol headquarters. A forensic teacher named Micah has found evidence about the existence of the clan. Unaware of how dangerous this piece of information can be, she brings it to her senior at work, Maslow. 
He refuses to believe that there is a secret ninja organization that only elites know about. But Micah shows him the reports which prove the connection between the flow of money from world leaders and the deaths of many known figures. Maslow, now interested, decides to dig further into the matter. Eventually, they find out that a high-ranking KGB agent, Sabatin, has made similar reports in the past. But as his work started to gain recognition, he was kicked out of his post for being delusional and eventually was killed. Then, we see that Rizo is also in the city of Berlin, living in a shabby apartment for a special task. He trains every morning over a block of nails, like he was taught by his master. One day, he goes to the local laundry shop and comes across a woman. She seems to be friendly, but he instantly recognizes her as a ninja. The two attack each other and indulge in a tough fight. A while later, we see blood dripping out of a washing machine and the girl's body spinning inside of it. Meanwhile, Micah takes her investigation a step forward and goes to meet the wife of the former agent who was killed for talking about the clans. The woman reveals her husband was a strong, courageous man, but after the scandal, everything changed. He became so much of a coward that every door and window had a minimum of two locks, and every corner of the house was well lit. He left no space for the shadows, so the ninjas had no place to hide. Still, one night, the lights went off, and he was killed. The next day at work, a higher official comes to Micah's office for evaluation. It is clear that he is there to keep an eye on her because people are talking about her being too curious about things that don't concern her. That evening, Micah returns home cautiously but finds out there has been a power outage in the entire block. Still, she goes inside her dark apartment but is then attacked by a ninja. Surprisingly enough, another ninja saves her life and kills the assassins. He is none other than Rizo. Another flashback shows us the adult Rizo on his mission to complete his first assassination. He lets all of his frustration out and brutally kills the target. After the mission, he comes to the rooftop to meet the rest of the clan. Lord Ozunu says that he is proud of Raizo and calls him closer. To his surprise, Raizo attacks him with the Kyoketsu Shoge that cuts him across the face and an eye. His fellow ninja attacks him and pushes him off the building. After hurting him gravely, Raizo barely survives the fall by landing in the water. Then, ever since he recovered, he has been working against the clan, intervening in all of Ozunu's assassination attempts. He saved Micah's life for the same reason. They drive to a hotel and change their clothes because ninjas use a special smelling technique to track them. Following that, she gives Maslow a call and tells him she is with Rizo. The man has been asked to capture Rizo as soon as he comes into view. He knows that Rizo is not their primary opponent, but he has to obey the orders for his own life. Hence, when the three meet to discuss the next step in the plan, Rizo is surrounded by police and arrested. He is taken to a hideout and chained in a solitary prison. Micah finds out that Maslow arrested him out of desperation. Still, he refuses to let go of Rizo because he will be the safest in the prison. At night, Micah goes to him and offers him water. Rizo takes the opportunity to reveal that the assassins will be here any second. Micah tries to warn Maslow, but it is too late. The lights go off and the ninjas come out of the shadows. Even with the most advanced weapon, the soldiers are proven to be weak against the warriors. Micah unlocks the chains off Rizo's hands right before he is killed. He fights the ninjas and asks Micah to run away since he cannot save both of them. Rizo is the best student the Ozunu clan has ever had, but still, going against a whole horde of ninjas is difficult for him. In the end, he and Takeshi end up on the road. Takeshi picks up his sword to end Rizo's life for good, but Micah arrives at the right time and hits him with her car. She brings Rizo to a hotel. Although he is severely injured, he refuses to go to the doctor. She sits beside him, talking to his unconscious self. She apologizes for not being of use to him and thanks him for her life. After that, she pulls a tracking device that tells Maslow their location. But before the police can come, the assassins appear out of nowhere and abduct Rizo. When the police arrive, they only find Micah sitting on the sofa. She tells them that Rizo was abducted 10 minutes ago. 
Back in the clan's base, Raizo is presented to Lord Ozunu. The man gives him one last chance to apologize, but Raizo refuses. Ozunu is especially furious, because once he had believed that Raizo was going to replace him and take his place as the master of the clan, he makes Raizo stand in the same position Kiriko was executed. Raizo is then hit with the finger-jabbing technique thrice. While most people would die from a single blow of the technique, Raizo just vomits blood. Alongside it, he also vomits a tracking device. Before the ninjas see it, Micah, with an entire police force, enters the premises and wreaks havoc. Many ninjas are killed with explosives, so hiding in the dark doesn't work. In an ensuing battle, many people from both parties are killed. Raizo is confronted by Takeshi and his people. Even though the fight isn't fair, he kills all the ninjas and waits for Takeshi's attack. Then, the two fight with all their might, and Raizo wins in the end. Takeshi's limbs and eventually neck are cut off. Now the only person Raizo has to face is his former master, Ozunu. He finds the old man inside a room, sitting calmly while people die outside. The master proves his expertise by disappearing into thin air and coming out of the shadows behind Raizo. With only a push, he sends Raizo flying to the other room. Then, they both bring out their swords and engage in a fierce sword fight. Ozunu gives him yet another chance to apologize, claiming himself to be Raizo's father. But Raizo replies that he is no one's son, and the second he kills Ozunu will be his first breath in life. With that being said, the two leap at each other, but Ozunu disappears yet again. Suddenly, Micah comes into the room, hoping to help Raizo. However, Ozunu reappears from the shadows and attacks her with a sword right through her chest. The fight falls into Ozunu's side until Raizo plays the same trick and slices his body repeatedly from the shadows. In the end, he is killed with a sword to his shoulder. Raizo brings Micah outside, and the paramedics come to her aid. It turns out she was also born with a heart on the right side of her chest, which means she will survive. In the last scene, Raizo jumps off the wall of the academy, as Kiriko wanted him to. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.